This is the one you've been waiting for. If there is a relationship wobbly in your life. That could be a relationship wobbly on a personal level where we're having some trouble in that department and there's room for healing. Or it's the person at work that you have to deal with on a daily basis and you just don't get along with that person as well as you would like to, but you have to deal with them and you'd like to deal with them better than what you currently are. We already know, us people here in this room, that we are responsible for our own feelings and therefore our results. We cannot change others through trying to change them. We can only empower ourselves so that we can communicate, relate to and understand them better. The magic of it is that when we make changes in ourselves, we start to see the other people differently. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it really does seem like they've made some radical changes. They're much nicer people to be around. Sometimes it can seem like they've been going for coaching. When in fact the only changes that have really taken place are within you and the way in which you're observing them now in light of your new perspectives. So this model enables you to have new enlightened perspectives with regards to others in your life where you would like to be relating to them better. And it's a really fun and positive process. You're going to learn to do it one way using two chairs today and you'll very quickly understand how you can do it without the chairs too. So the idea is we're going to see a situation from multiple points of view and get necessary learnings. So there are three main perceptual positions that we refer to when doing this process. Position one is your point of view. How you see, hear, feel, smell and taste your world. Position two is another person's point of view, the other. This process will force them to have a very real experience of the other person's point of view. And position three is the fly on the wall. That which is neither you nor me, but a perspective from a non-emotional, objective observer. And in this process we become all three. So then, what we're going to do is we're going to bring lightness and playfulness into what might be quite a serious issue for you. And I want you to know that the playfulness is in no way meant to make fun or mockery of you and the seriousness of your issue. But it is meant to bring some lightness into it so that you can be helped to think and feel differently and to become empowered in that relationship challenge that you're having so that you can make the choice that's right for you. And you're fine with that, are you? Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. Okay. That's you're here because you have said there is room for improvement, my words. Mm -hmm. There is room for improvement in your intimate relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not going to elicit any more of an issue or any more of an outcome than that. Let's see what comes out of this exercise. Okay. So are you ready to begin? Absolutely. Here we go. Okay. So what you see here are two chairs. Okay. But they're a metaphor. Mm -hmm. They represent your relationship with the other person. Now, I am going to need the other person's name and you'll find out why as we go. You don't have to give me the person's real name, mm -hmm. but we have found okay. that when we use the real name, it becomes more powerful and personal for you. Are you would you prefer to give another name no. or the real name? The real name. So how can I call the other person? Um, maybe it's difficult for you to pronounce Jörg. Jörg. So, one chair is going to be Jörg, mm -hmm. one chair is going to be you. Yes. Which one is you, which one is Jörg? Uh, this one is Jörg and this one is mine. Okay, so this is you, that is Jörg. Yes. And I would like you to take these two chairs now, that is you and Jörg. Yes. And I would like you to arrange them in a way that represents how you see the relationship now. And you can take those chairs and you can move them anywhere around this room. We'll just use the space we've got. You can turn them upside down. You can put them on top of each other. You can put them in opposite directions. You can put them as far away as, as you need to. You can put them on, in any way that for you represents 
the relationship as you currently perceive the relationship. Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, it's not, we are really close, but <clears throat> most of the times it's only confrontation. Oh, con like confrontation, really in the face it seems like, huh? Yes. So this is you, <laughs> yes. Jörg. Yes. So it's not 100% face to face, but almost. Almost, almost, yeah. always. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And I noticed that you moved towards Jörg. Was that meaningful? Jörg is still in the original position. Yeah, I think it's, I didn't realize it. No, your unconscious it's mind it's did something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's it's important. Yeah. Hmm. So you moved towards him, and now it's a bit of a confrontational arrangement. And this is currently how you represent the relationship with these two chairs. Yes. Well done. Great. What's going to happen first is I'm going to ask you to take a seat, of course, in your position. So if you'd be so kind, <laughs> and. From your point of view, okay, we call this first position in NLP. From your point of view in this position, in relationship with Jörg, tell us please what's going on for you in this relationship. What are you seeing? What are you hearing? What are you feeling? And what do you want in this relationship? I see him right in front of me. It's the same size, or yeah. maybe he's taller, but it's on the same emotional level. I don't know how to explain. Okay. Um, it makes me, you can see it, um, I'm freezing now a little bit. Yeah. And it, um, I've, I've got a feeling of a little bit tightness in my breast, and... Uh, mm -hmm. Because I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated in, in a kind of way. Okay. Um, he's just sitting there, and for me, it's it's like um, I try to to move two words and try to change my position, whatever, and to adapt to him, but he's just in his position, and his position is always right, and uh, if something's wrong, it's my, my turn, or my problem, and um, I want to be closer to him, I want him to understand what's going on inside myself, and the most important thing, I want um, to, to get a better communication with him. Um, because he's blocking. Always when I want to talk about emotional things, what's going on inside or what's uh, relating to both of us and our future, I can see in his face, in his eyes, everything. It's just like a wall is blocking. And that is the main reason why I'm so frustrated. Because I cannot, I cannot um, um, touch him. I cannot come close enough to him to, um, yeah, it's just like, I can, it's like a wall. He's just like a wall around his, his emotions and I don't know why. Especially in a verbal, in a verbal case, mm. a verbal uh, situation. It's not that he don't love me, but uh, it's just I can't communicate with him about it. Is that really what the problem is for you? You can't communicate to him about what you'd like to. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Is that really? That's it for you. That's the heart of it. That's the heart of it. No. Okay. You can stand up again. Thank you very much. Now we're going to do the interesting part. Well done on being brave enough to tell us that. I'd like you to step outside.
If you'd be so kind, I'd like you to do one little jog around the pool and then come right back to here and then stand outside when you're ready because when you come back, you're someone very, very different. Okay. 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 You're like no one you've ever experienced before. So when she comes back, I will get really animated in how I welcome the coach quantum back into the room. I am not exaggerating the way I do it in real life. Oh my gosh, coach quantum, I can't believe it's you. What a privilege, come on in. Wow, I, this is amazing. You've come at just the right time because we've got a situation. Now I know that you're expensive, time is money, but with your intelligence and wisdom, I know this will be easy and quick. So if I may, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Okay. We've, got a, we've got something that's just suited for you right here. Now, there is Silka, mm -hmm. there is Jörn. And I know that out there in the quantum universe where you've just been flying around the planets and the stars with your special abilities, you've heard what Silka has to say over here. In light of your wisdom and knowledge and experience, I'm just wondering, do you have any advice for her? Is there anything you could say to Silke that would inspire her, uplift her, and help her in this situation? What does she need to know? He loves her. He loves her. I think so, yeah. yeah. You, I mean, Coach Quantum, you know everything. I know it, I know it, yeah. You do know that he loves her. Yeah. That's wonderful. Silke probably needs to know that. Yes. Is, is there a way in which she can know it more or deeper? I, I don't know. What, what do you suggest for Silke, Coach Quantum, so that she can completely, you know... I think she knows that he's always standing 150% behind her and he accepts everything she likes to do and he gives her the space to develop herself, to find herself, to do the things on herself and what she wants to do. And he sounds like a really nice guy. I'd like to get to know him sometime. <laughs> oh, wow. Is there something that Silke needs to know that so that she can really appreciate that and, and uh, do something good with it? Or what, what does she need to know? The most important thing she needs to know is that she can feel safe ah. and uh, yeah, just laughed, just laughed about herself with any Failures or weaknesses, do you say? Yeah, yeah. Or it's fine, it's just fine that she is how she is and she is loved anyway. Well, do you think she'll be able to take that in and really feel it and live it? What would she need to hear from you as the almighty coach quantum in your wisdom? What would she need to hear from you? What advice would you give her so that she can really take that, take that home, that advice of yours? You're just, <clears throat> you're just okay like you are. Do you think she'll believe it? You don't have to be perfect all the time. You don't have to be strong. You're just okay like the way you are. And you're loved anyway. Or, yeah. Wow. Well, I think she's going to appreciate hearing that from you, Coach Quantum. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's an absolute <laughs> honor to have been in your presence in the situation. I'm privileged. I think we can't afford to pay for any more of your time. So we're going to have to send you out there to become one with the universe again. Send our, send our regards to the angels and all your friends out there. Okay. One loop around the pool and we'll see you back here. Okay. 
the idea is that when coach quantum comes in here, you want a completely different state change, of course. In a different state, we're accessing resources that aren't normally available to us in our normal way of thinking. So we're looking for a radical state change, especially after second position. Now comes second position. Silka, come on in. Hey, hey, uh, you just missed something amazing. You won't believe what happened here. Anyway, Silka, what we're going to do is I'm going to ask mm -hmm. you to take this chair for a while. And this you're going to become yeah. York. Okay. You will be York and I will talk to you as York for a little while so that we can get some information from York's point of view, okay, in this situation. Okay. Are you willing to do that? To be York, to become York. To have his thoughts and to feel his feelings just to get the information for the shortest time we need, okay? Okay. York. Please take a seat in your position. Look, I'd like to ask you some questions. Silke, over there, this relationship. What do you see and hear going on from Silke? She's standing up and struggling around. <laughs> um, early in the morning when she stands up, she's just in a bad mood. She's complaining about everything, she's talking with herself, running through the flat and just have negative thoughts and everything she has to do is just a have to do. I have to do this and I have to do that. And she um, loses her love, uh, not love, but love, love, lachen, love. And I think she is not able to enjoy her life. Yeah. And she's struggling with me all the time. Mm. Yeah. How does that make you feel? I get tired of it and I don't want to struggle because I'm, I never want to struggle. Mm. And it's... Um, um, Frustrating for me, or exhausted. Exhausted is a bad word. Okay. It's very exhausted. Yeah, you're getting exhausted. Okay, tell me, what do you want out of this relationship with Silka? What's important to you about this relationship? More harmony. Mm -hmm. To lean on each other, to know that she stands behind me and she trusts and believes in our future, to go in the same direction, to enjoy the life together, to have fun. Mm. To get more feelings and more emotions of her. You would get like more, that from her. Get more, yes, would like to have mm. more love mm. back to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Is there any last thing, any needs you would like to express perhaps with regards to this relationship with Silka? She should be just be more relaxed. Not always in hurry, hurry, hurry. Okay. Anything from you, Jörg, or are you done? Have you said enough? I think that's enough. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Then you can rise from that seat. And what you're going to do is outside. Now you can go around the pool two or three times if you want to, but one should be enough. But what happens is when you come back in here, you are very different. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Go for it. <laughs> Especially important now is that after having been in second position, the client comes back having changed. If they've done that with a perpetrator that they're trying to heal the relationship with, and they've taken on a really yucky second position, you want them to make sure they've got rid of that energy and that feeling in their body so that when they come back, they can be purely coach quantum. And you need to calibrate to the fact that they're not coming back still a bit emotional. Coach a quantum twice in one day. I can't believe it. This is amazing. Come on in. 
since you've been away, the most amazing thing has happened. So I'm so happy that you've come back for a second time because we've just heard from Jörg. He was just here explaining things about his point of view and his feelings and his intentions and his desires in this relationship with Silka. It was amazing to hear what he had to say. Now, I know, of course I know, that you heard it all because you know, you're one with the universe and everything. But I'm interested, based on what York has told us, yeah. do you have any more advice for Silka? Is there anything that Silka needs to know now that York has expressed himself? That her behavior hurts him. That it's, it's not nice and it's exhausted for him. And um, she, it's important to show him her love as well. And uh, not struggling all the time. Uh -huh. Relaxing, calming down, enjoy the life. Just be happy with him together. Okay. Do you think she's capable of that? Yes. Do you think she's willing to do that? Do you think she's willing to take this action, to step towards, to give it a shot? Mm -hmm. I think so, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Any final words of wisdom, advice, perhaps, for Silke before we let you go and fly off again? Believe in your partnership and in the love. Coach Quantum, it's been an absolute joy. <laughs> I've learned so much from you today. Thank you so much. Go and be one. Send our regards to your friends out there in the okay. cosmos. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> so now she comes back and she is going to take on first position again and notice what's changed. This is the test. We're done. We're now testing it. Not bad. <laughs> Who thought you... You might have thought you're going to sit around her the whole time. Silke, come on in. But really, you're getting a workout out of it. Silke, you've been there before. This time, maybe it's different. Would you like to take a seat over there? Okay. How is it to be there now? Much more better. Oh, really? Yeah, definitely. What have you learned? That it's important for me to show him my feelings as well and to tell him and uh, to let him know that I love him too and I believe in the partnership and I'm willing to do everything to get them a great chance without knowing how it ends. But anyway, um, just to be on his side and to, um, to look in the same direction and just trust, trust in our partnership and trust in our love and just do it. Just take the next step. What is the next step for you? What, what is it that you're just going to do? What's the next action step for you? Now. Well, not necessarily now, perhaps. Maybe it is now. Maybe it's tonight. Maybe it's when you see him next. I'm not too sure. What, what do you think it's for you? The next step for me is to tell him that I love him and that I believe in our partnership. And I want to try to take the next step. I want, yeah. Okay. I just want to do it. Super. <laughs> that sounds good to me. Excellent. So now, if you're willing to stand up, <clears throat> here's the real test. Would you like to take these two chairs now that represent you and Jörg? And perhaps if they've moved, I don't know. But place them <clears throat> in a position that for you now in your perception 
represents the relationship in the way you feel the relationship. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Are you happy with that? Yes. It looks like it. Are we done? <laughs> well done. There we go. That's a very powerful exercise. Mm. So it could have gone anywhere. Could have gone anywhere. And we've had in the past where the chairs were apart and then further apart afterwards. Well, you can guess where that led. Yeah. But the client was congruent with it. Mm. They were satisfied. They were happy and empowered about their choices. Mm. They were clear and they knew what was right for them. Normally, most of the time, the chairs move closer and the client's very satisfied with that. And on the CD, of course, there are no chairs and I'm guiding you through the process on the relationship resourcing CD as well. No chairs are necessary. It's a way of learning how to do it. But I still use the chairs with clients. It's a great prop. Adds animation and you get the coach quantum in and out the door and it gets exciting. I have uh, done this before with people who had been abused and they were trying to find within themselves the capacity to accept and forgive the perpetrator. It works for that. It works extremely well, there's just one caution. When they have to take second position and they have to now assume the physiology and speak in the way and become and think the thoughts and feelings of the perpetrator, it's very difficult for them. And you need to be very sensitive because it might just be too delicate, it might be too sensitive and then it's not appropriate. But if they're willing to and you've done the optimal pre-frame, the build-up beforehand, then it should be doable, especially when they have come to you with the issue of, I want to be able to move on. I am the victim of this experience and I just cannot get it out of my head. I just cannot move on. I cannot accept it, but I want to be able to accept it. If they say, I don't want to accept it, it's not the right exercise. If they want to be able to accept it, but they need help to get there. If they want to be able to forgive, but they need help to get there, then it's the right exercise. And then, after they've been in second position and you send them out, they need to have a big breaker state. Because when they come back in, they have to be coach quantum. And there can be none of that emotion associated with being in the second position left. If there is, you send them right back out. You tell them to do a few more spins and deep breathing exercises. When they come back in, you are very animated to make sure they are coach quantum when they come in. Any questions? relationship. I mean, it doesn't even have to be a living relationship. No. It can just it, it, be how you, if you want to move on from that particular relationship. You know what? Absolutely be. yes, even though I've never used it for that. Mm -hmm. But to come to, to come to terms with or to move on from or to still forgive a deceased person, absolutely. Absolutely. Because it's your relationship with that person and the relationship still exists. Mm -hmm. As long as that person's in your mind, occupying space, you have a relationship with them and this is a relationship healing process. So absolutely, <laughs> yes. And if the mother brings the child, because they know you do this powerful relationship healing coaching, um, and the child's there because the mother dragged them in, not good enough. The child must be willing in and of their own accord. In the inside, guys, we know we've got some really big, manly men. Now, if you get a guy who comes in there and he's like this huge, burly guy, he's like a rugby player or something like that, the bigger they are, it seems to be the more shy they are. I mean, do you... With emotional you, things, yeah. Yeah. I mean, to get into role play like that, they're probably going to not be that keen. Now, how do you deal with that? How do you kind of get them to... The pre-frame. Up front, you let them know more or less what to expect, so it doesn't come as a surprise. Plus, 
maybe I got a little bit more animated than I might. Certainly with uh, the rugby player client who snuck in the back door and parked three blocks down the road because he doesn't want to be seen to be coming to see me. And I have had clients like that. The conversation that you have up front to prepare them, let them know you're going to do things that are a little bit weird and wacky, perhaps. You're going to ask them some unusual questions. But you know, if you didn't, you can say this to them, if I don't do something unusual and ask you some or, or different questions, then you'll probably carry on doing the same old things and asking yourself the same old questions and getting the same old results. So would it be okay if in this unique style of coaching, I took a different approach asked you some strange questions perhaps and we gave something else a go in the name of getting results. Would that be okay? If they give you a congruent yes, you got the license to do what it takes. All right. Are you ready to go and do it? You've got notes, a comprehensive script basically. Refer to it. Take time out, excuse yourself so that you maintain rapport, check your notes, come back, carry on. Here's a summary. Client comes, ask them what type of a relationship issue. The real presenting issue is only elicited when they take first position. So first they represent the chairs, to, uh, they move the chairs to represent the relationship as they currently perceive it. The one is them, the one is the other person. It's good to have the other person's real name for the purpose of really taking second position. They first sit in their position. You ask them, what do you see and hear going on? How does it make you feel? And what do you want out of this relationship? You gather that information, you send them out. They come back as Coach Quantum. Coach Quantum advises them based on what they told you. You don't have to remember what they told you because they've just said it themselves. But now Coach Quantum, in a meta perspective, all resourceful, is advising them based on the information that they've shared with you. Once Coach Quantum has shed some light and some insight, we send Coach Quantum back out to the universe. The person who comes back is the client, your real client, Silka. But as they come in, I let Silka know, now you're going to take second position. And as I'm ready, I say, sit down, York. You now call them by the name of that person and you make sure that they sit the way that person would normally sit. It must be distinctly different from how your client was sitting before. And they must become that person and you prompt them to do so as much as they can for the shortest possible time. Then you want to know from that person in second position, calling them by name, what do you see and hear going on from the other person, the other person who's your client? What's the intention behind your behavior? And what do you want in this relationship? Gather that information, send them back out. They do a whole lot of uh, changing of state outside when they come back in. They are Coach Quantum again. Coach Quantum now advises your client in first position. Coach Quantum never advises the second position person. Why? Because we can only change ourselves, we can't change the other person. We're changing our perspectives. So Coach Quantum is giving me advice, not the other person that I want to deal with better. So Coach Quantum, now in light of having heard the other person also, shares advice to themselves in first position. So basically looking at the chair, talking. It doesn't have to be like, um, by the way, Silka, what you need to do, da da da. It's sort of a, a meta dialogue. They're talking to you about what they are saying to themselves. Okay? But sometimes they take on, they talk to themselves like this. Okay, what I want you to do is this, that, and you need to love him, and you need to open your, and they talk to, that's fine. If the client spontaneously understands that that's what they're supposed to do, I'm fine with it. I let them do that. It works just the same. Maybe it even works better. Once the coach quantum has shed light for the second time, they go out, they come back as the client again. Client sits down. This is the test. After coach quantum's second uh, advice, we're done. Sitting in first position now is the test. Is the client happy? I'm asking questions along the lines of what do you notice now? How is it to be here now? Silka was glowing. She was happy. Because what you can do, if, the, if they're still uncertain, you can ask the person who's sitting in first position, because if you're not sure, we can always get Coach Quantum to come again. 
you can always have the person come back again as coach quantum and shed some more resources. And then the ultimate test, which is also your future pace in this case, is they get up and they move the chairs. And more important than the new position of the chairs is their congruence with the new configuration. Are they happy with it? And then you're done. And that's all in your notes. Are you ready? <laughs>